Hello viewers and fellow YouTubers alike, and welcome to another First Impressions video, yes, again, on Gamer Slice. So today we're going to be talk. I'm going to be talking about the Hitman beta. It opened, they, they got, did an open beta, didn't, I'm not going to call it an open beta because it's just, you know, the same thing, just open to more people now. So in the beta, they showcase two training missions, that's basically what it was. And they actually had you play through the second, or the first one, uh, multiple times because like actually with the tutorial because one time they guide you through it and then they did another training or like a free roam thing or, or free free play just for you to try new experiment with new things for like new players to to get into it i'm not sure if these two training missions count as the prologue all together and then the chapter one because the, the full game is going to launch with the, the starter pack or whatever is going to be the prologue in the first chapter so i'm not sure if these two training missions are the prologue in its their entirety and then it's just you know chapter one is the next one but uh... i would expect a little more for a prologue for but it's fifteen bucks and so chapter one is probably more substantial and hi this hitman game seems to be not Agent 47's origins per se, but his beginnings with the agency. You know, you get to talk with Diana, and uh, one of these things you'll you'll see right off the bat here is that the cut, uh, cut scenes in this game during like they have loading screens, and the game seems like the audio starts cutting out and everything. Here, I'm just going to play this for you right now. Well, that part is my job. No, your enemy is only half the victory. I know. You also need to know yourself. I'm working on it. So this is an issue. I'm not sure if uh, it's going to persist into the main game. I sure hope not, because this would be really annoying. I don't know why the loading does that. but And it always does it right at the same spot, too. Now, I would say that this Hitman reboot, as one might call it, is probably less story driven than Hitman Absolution. Hitman Absolution was very, in case you haven't played it, it's very was was quite story driven, more dr story driven than any other Hitman game, and kind of restricted you more than it should. So they say there's going to be more open worlds. Uh, the the maps are not too open in the beta because, as I said, it's just like some training missions, so it's it's somewhat restricted there. But uh, apparently, the levels in the full game will be more open. But it is very similar to Hitman Absolution in just basically the way it plays, the way the mechanics work, and all that. But there are some key differences, and I would say it works out for the better. It will be a better game than, than Absolution. Business model, that's something I'll talk about at the end. But as far as the actual quality of the game, it seems like it will be a better game. So here's one of the biggest differences is there is no score. In Hitman Absolution, you had a, a score, and by killing non-targets you know, detracted from your score, even subduing non-targets, subtracted from your score, but by like hiding the bodies, you could get some of your score back, but to get like the highest level, you basically had to go through the level suit only, not necessarily, but basically suit only, and kill only the target, and hide his body, and escape without anybody spotting you, or even anybody becoming suspicious. Now, one of the other big changes is the disguises. In Hitman Absolution, I feel like the disguises were pulled off bad, and just because of the fact that they had the score, if you even disguised yourself it, it, or knocked out another target, you couldn't get as high of a score. So for me, personally, who's somebody who's going in there trying to get the best score, I did a lot of the level challenges, it, I, I didn't disguise myself often because I wanted that high score, and it basically penalized me. And I feel like the Hitman is made to be playing using disguises. That what, that's what makes it fun. That's what creates these awesome moments. Otherwise, it's just really challenging as heck, and some sections are just really not even set up well for you to get past everybody with only the suit. So... This one, there's no penalty for using disguises, which is a huge improvement. And before, in Absolution, people, like, uh, dudes, if you got a disguise, like, say you got a mechanic disguise, all the other mechanics would grow suspicious of you. Now, there's certain individuals that are perceptive in the level so like out of maybe 12 other mechanics or you know let's just say six or seven other mechanics in the level maybe one possibly two of them might be able to spot you but for the most part you could still walk past most of them which I think is much more realistic and it makes the game might would make definitely made the game much more enjoyable to play for me on top of that when you're in a disguise your cover is not blown immediately I mean 
they the guards will still try to arrest you or something like that, but you are not immediately, you know, turned upon. They'll be like, "Sir, you have to leave the area." I mean, they'll they'll say that before, but they'll like pursue you more and maybe try to arrest you. But there is still ways of getting away. But if you do get away, they will still kind of raise an alert. So it's not like it's going to reset to you being perfectly undetected. One thing that I found very interesting that they did in this game is they increased the a number of weapons you could pick up. So you could pick up like, oh, a couple hammers, a couple wrenches, you know, all that stuff. And you could carry, carry more of it. Uh, you can carry multiple guns, and what's cool is you can actually like place a gun out there, and if somebody sees it, or if like a civilian sees it, or a guard sees it, or whatever, the civilian will like uh, report it to the guard, and the guard will be like check it out, and you can use these as distractions to kind of keep the guards occupied and away from their posts at certain moments. So I think that's a really interesting mechanic uh, that is new to this this Hitman game. That being said, there are still crutches in this game. <laughs> Uh, it kind of lets off a bit as you go on to more training, but there still are some crutches where it says like, oh, go do this, get this disguise to sneak up and, and, and lure this person out to, to kill him in this way. But even when it lets up, though, there are still some crutches in a way because there's specific places or there's specific places that are obviously intended for you to kill a target. Um, so... And, and if you try to do it other times, it just doesn't flow weird. It like it wouldn't work in a realistic scenario, but it can work in a game. But speaking of these challenges to complete, in Absolution, I was actually inclined to complete them. And it's being said, I did complete almost all the challenges that were available in the Hitman beta. But in Absolution, I would complete them because they would increase your score multiplier, uh, multiplier that and the difficulty, so you could get a higher score when finishing the level. But this time, because there is no score, as far as I can tell, there's no actual incentive to create, the, uh, complete the challenges, except for maybe um, higher agent ranking, on, ranking on leaderboards, or maybe like trophies or achievements or something like that. But other than that, there's really no incentive to complain the level multiple times and complete these challenges, except for maybe just just being able to see what the game has to offer. There's also some glitches in the beta that I saw. Some of them were pretty funny. Uh, there were a couple that were game breaking per se because they would lock out certain ways of of doing it but hopefully those won't persist in in the main game although it is pretty darn close to launch you know I, I, in fact by the time this video goes up it's you know some people might already be playing it if you because you download it digitally you might be able to preload it and possibly play it early but one other thing they added, there's uh, coins that they added in this game. So you can use the coins to distract guards, and you can, I don't know if there's a set number that you can carry, I guess, just however many are in the level. But it's kind of nice, rather than having, and you can also collect, as I said, multiple wrenches, crowbars, you know, whatever, and toss multiple. And so you can have multiple items at one time to go and distract guards. Now I think about this though, the coins basically just replace co crowbars and wrenches because crowbars and wrenches don't distract them anymore, which is really weird. Like they don't even make, well, they might make sound, but they don't actually lure people in. But a coin does for some reason. Um, the other thing, I feel like the AI in some ways is maybe smarter than Absolution. However, in one regard, which is when it comes to blood pools, the AI seems to not detect blood pools in the beta, which they did in Absolution, so uh, hopefully they would in the real game. I mean, I guess it makes it easier to complete some of the levels now, because you don't have to worry about a guard seeing a blood pool, but at the same time, it's kind of like, it's a downgrade, and we don't want downgrades in our game. So finally, the business model is the only thing I'm really a bit unsure of with this game. $15, provided there's still a little more to the prologue and the first chapter is pretty well done. I think $15 is okay, but they're charging $10 for subsequent chapters. And I, I just really don't think this is going to kick off very well, because if they're going to be developing this over time, I feel like people are going to lose interest in it. Like, So it's best just to buy it, because apparently they're going to bring it out on disc, or at least digitally they're going to pack the whole thing together in one whole thing for like $60. Um, towards the end of the year whenever they finish developing it. But I'm also concerned that maybe there's delays on certain episodes now, because it really is episodic. That's what it is. But I'm I'm, I'm not so sure, but I'm skeptical. And, and one of the reasons I'm very skeptical is that, you know, I haven't really seen 
seen a company do something like this before with like a full game. I think if you have the game completed and you're going like for Call of Duty f example, uh, I know on the PC they, they separated in Black Ops 3, they separated the multiplayer and you could buy the multiplayer alone. It was a restricted version of the multiplayer, however. But multiplayer nonetheless, you could buy it for 15 bucks and like not even buy the rest of this stuff, which I think is cool. That's that's all really good because, you know, it's, it's pro, a pro-consumer business model. In this case, though, as I said in our February podcast, it is transferring this way. It is transferring the risk to the consumer because they are still creating the game and they are relying, it seems, on people's money to actually continue creating the rest of this game. So it's more or less early access Hitman. But just with like a bigger budget behind it and a, and a AAA studio, so it might be uh, more polished than what an early access game would be. But I would like to kn uh, know your guys' thoughts about the business model. Tell me if you're gonna do it, or and if you're gonna buy the game, or if you're just gonna like wait for it to come out um, when when everything's out. But as I said, this. It's kind of a sketchy business model. I'm a little unsure of it, and it could actually bring it about the demise of Hitman. This could be the last Hitman game if this does poorly. Um, if it does good, then then Square Enix may say, "Hey, I O, you know, we want you to make more of them." But as it as it stands, there's a slight chance that this could be the last Hitman game. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in more videos coming within the next week. Until next time. Hope you guys stay safe, and if you're playing the division, beware of those trolls, man. They'll get you.